Hey guys, Jocelyn here from Fantasia Elegance. One of the most common questions I get asked in my jewelry tutorials is what wires I recommend for beginners, uh, both in terms of ease of use and their price point. So I figured I would go ahead and make a tutorial specifically on that for you all to answer that question uh, of what wires I recommend for folks who are just getting into wire wrapping and all types of jewelry making. So I've selected a couple different options here, all of which are very readily affordable for the beginning jeweler. Um, first of all, and this is probably what I used most when I was first getting into wire wrapping, um, it's actually the brand Artistic Wire. And this is a silver plated wire, which is pretty cool because it actually has an enamel coating on the outside of it, um, which is invisible to look at, but it will help it to resist both tarnishing and a removal of the very thin silver plate, which of course all silver pl plated wires do have a very thin layer of silver that can easily get rubbed off and reveal the base metal underneath, which is why with a lot of your cheap jewelry it will turn yellow over time and that can't be cleaned. That's actually the base metal showing through. So by having this um, enamel coating on the outside of it, it helps to resist that um, for a little bit longer than it otherwise would. And Artistic Wire does make um, pretty much all different colors of wire. I like the silver because it looks like just your standard, you know, it could pass for sterling um, silver wire. Another option uh, that does not tarnish is aluminum wire. Um, as you can see, it's a slightly different shade of silver. It's a little bit more of a cold color to it. But again, it does have that nice silver hue. And uh, the thing to remember with aluminum wire is that it's not going to be as sturdy. Um, it's very soft, very pliable. Um, however, it does work well for a lot of different jewelry pieces that you might consider. Um, I've done one tutorial on how to make a very pretty braided bracelet using this exact aluminum wire. You can view that here as one example. Um, really, anytime you're using this aluminum wire, you want to give thought to how you can reinforce it so that it doesn't bend out of shape on you. But again, super affordable um, and very, very easy to work with because it is so pliable. So that is another option with your aluminum wire there. As you progress in your jewelry making and you decide you want to start graduating to a little bit nicer wire, higher quality, um, but can't quite afford sterling silver yet, you may want to consider using what's called silver filled wire. Um, and this is very much like silver plated except the layer of actual sterling is going to be much much thicker. Um, it's not that it's filled with silver, it's that uh, kind of envision it as silver wire that is filled, the core is filled with a base metal rather than silver plated, you have a base metal that is dipped in a very thin layer of silver. Um, so this is 110 silver filled wire, which means that it is 10% uh, sterling silver by weight in the wire. So that might be another option for you to consider. And as far as where to buy these, um, you can buy your silver plated wires, aluminum wire at any local craft store. Um, I actually bought both of these on Amazon because my local craft stores are terrible and have no selection whatsoever. So I got these on Amazon. Um, and then for a lot of my wires, I also like to buy from, obviously you can see here the logo, RioGrande.com. Um, that is where I get my the majority of my silver filled wire as well. That is really the only place I've found that sells the um, selection and quality of wires for the silver filled and they have really good prices on sterling as well. So sorry to shamelessly give them a plug there. I am uh, not being paid by them, but hey, if I find a good thing, I'm going to share it with you guys. Um, if you want something that is not silver colored like these other kind of budget options, um, you might want to go for brass or copper wire. Um, and as you can see here, brass wire can pass for gold or gold plated. It has that kind of yellow hue. Copper wire obviously has the extremely distinctive copper color. Um, both of these are solid wires. That means it is the same metal all the way through the wire, unlike your silver plated. Um, one advantage of this is that there's no plating that can rub through and change the color of your piece. One thing to consider with uh, both brass and copper is that they will tarnish. 
Um, they can turn your skin slightly greenish if you wear pieces with them. Um, it's not really a dangerous effect, it just means you'll have to wash it off more frequently. And uh, you can take advantage of the tarnishing effect of these to get some neat, um, neat effects in your pieces. Um, for example, let me pull out one piece and show it to you with that. Here we go. Um, so here you can see a Tree of Life pendant I made out of copper wire. And uh, I did use liver of sulfur to kind of artificially accelerate this uh, oxidation, darkening, tarnishing, whatever you want to call it effect. And uh, then I just used a cleaning pad to kind of um, uh, polish off the raised portions to restore the natural copper shine. So that's one cool thing you can take advantage of that effect to get a really cool look to your pieces. You can see it brings out more definition. It's got the darker um, crevices and then the highlighted raised portions. Another nice thing, swapping back to the um, silver filled wire, you can also uh, treat this very much like you can solid sterling since it has a thicker layer of um, the silver. You can hammer it out without it uh, showing through to the base metal as with these solid wires. And uh, you can also treat it like sterling again with liver of sulfur to actually tarnish it, get it to oxidize, and then polish it up to get this really cool um, raised effect going on. So that's another thing to take note of as far as choices. You can't do that with either silver plated or the artistic wire. That might be an option for you to consider um, splurging a little bit more to get the silver filled wire. So let's also talk about what gauges of wire, what sizes you will want to get as a beginner. Um, for your very basic set, I would recommend getting at least um, 16 gauge, 18, 20, 22, and 24 as your very basic gauges to start out with. Um, bear in mind that the uh, lower the gauge number, the thicker the wire will be. Um, as you can see, this is 18 gauge. And as you can see, it is quite a bit thicker than your 24 gauge right here. Um, the reason I kind of selected that uh, 16 through 24 as your basic set to start off with is that that gives you the most flexibility with making different sorts of pieces. Um, typically, with wire wrapping, you're going to be connecting larger, thicker gauges of wire with smaller gauges of wire. Um, here is an example of that where you have your thicker piece and you have bound it together with the thinner piece. Um, also bear in mind that you are going to want different sizes of wire based on the style of jewelry you're going for. If you like more bold chunky pieces, you might want to get more uh, 14 and 16 gauge types of wire. Um, on the other hand, if you want to do more delicate work, more of the wire weaving type of thing, um, here's an example of that where you can see we use this really fine wire to weave around here, wrap around there. Um, then you might want to go and get more 26, 28, and 30 gauge to do this really fine wire weaving type of thing. So it really depends on what you're going for. Just as a rule of thumb, um, I like 22 and 21 gauge to make ear wires with, such as French hook ear wires. And uh, you, like, you might like 24 and 26 gauge to make things like head pins, eye pins, that sort of finding. But again, the actual gauge that you use in your piece will be determined by the look you're going for, how sturdy you want it to be, that sort of thing. Now, kind of as an addendum here, I wanted to show you a helpful little graphic to understand the differences between plated wires, um, the artistic wire, and filled wires. Um, so if you see here, I've drawn an example of what your silver or gold plated wire might look like. So if you envision this as the cross section of the wire, so this is your center, your base metal core, um, typically made out of brass, copper, or a mix thereof. And then you have your very thin, thin layer, it's thinner than what's pictured here, of uh, silver or gold, whatever precious metal they have plated it in. Um, with the artistic wire, you have the same thing as that, except on the outside they have kind of dipped it in this enamel coating. Um, again, as I discussed earlier, that gives some benefits in terms of it doesn't tarnish as quickly, doesn't wear through as quickly. Uh, unfortunately, this enamel coating, of course, will flake off eventually, and you can chip it off if you're not careful with your tools. So there are, of course, downsides with that as well. 
and your silver filled wire. Um, as you can see here, it's a much higher percentage, a thicker layer of actual sterling silver um, around your base metal core. This means it doesn't wear through as easily. You can really nick it and you will still have your silver coating intact. You can actually hammer it out and flatten it without it completely getting deformed and showing through the base metal like your silver plated would if you were to try and hammer that out. So that's kind of a little graphic there to help you understand some of the differences in the types of wire. Now if you're interested, I have done a tutorial on basic essential tools you will need to get started with wire wrapping. Um, you can view that by clicking the link provided right here. And of course, I also have multiple tutorials on all sorts of different jewelry projects, which you can view through my channel. Um, and by subscribing, um, please go ahead and do that. Also, please leave me a comment if you found this tutorial helpful. Um, if you have ideas for future jewelry, jewelry tutorials you might like to see. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and happy crafting.